free engineering advice? What's the catch? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. The catch is that you need to take action, and soon. No matter who you talk to, IMO 2020 promises to be a time of uncertain fuel prices. Because you see, starting January 2020, everyone is going to have to pay a higher price on their bunker bill, even if you have nothing to do with IMO rules. To prepare for that change, you should consider several different strategies for reducing your fuel consumption. The best part though, the strategies here don't require any capital investment from you. So let's get into this. First, a quick recap as to what is the IMO 2020. On January 1st, 2020, the IMO severely reduces sulfur emissions for every single vessel in the world. It drops down from 3.5% down to only 0.5%. That massive increase means that most of the ships in the world can no longer burn heavy fuel oil. They have only two major options. They can either install an exhaust gas scrubber or burn low sulfur fuel. Most of the vessels have not been installing exhaust gas scrubbers. So we're expecting that in January 1st, 2020, we're going to see a major demand for low sulfur fuel. The catch is that low sulfur fuel is really just a blend of heavy fuel oil plus diesel fuel treated to be low in sulfur. That's going to be a huge demand on the supply of diesel. Well, if we remember Economics 101, we remember these two words, supply and demand. And when suddenly a whole lot of people in the world are asking for a lot more diesel, the oil companies are going to turn around and say, hmm, I bet I can increase the price. So we are all expecting the price for diesel oil to go up. How much? We're not sure. But you can bet that the prices are going to vary quite a bit and they are going to go up. That's got everyone pretty darn nervous. Well, that is some pretty nasty news, I have to admit. What can you do about it though? Not pay for diesel? In terms of real solutions, here are three practical strategies that you can actually implement to reduce your fuel consumption. And the best part of all, these strategies require no capital investments. Number one, reduce your speed. It sounds simple, but we underestimate just how quickly fuel consumption drops with speed. For this simplified case, we're going to ignore the changes in engine and propeller efficiency. The fuel consumption drops off with the cube of ship speed. Cube, that's a really impressive change. Two important takeaways from the graph on your screen. First, even a small reduction in ship speed vastly reduces your fuel consumption. Just drop your speed by one knot and your fuel consumption goes down by 14%, assuming you were starting at 20 knots. Now the second thing that you should notice from that curve, look real closely at the slope of the curve, right at the beginning. Notice that we have a steeper slope at the beginning of the curve. That's important. That means that small initial reductions give us more relative benefit than later speed reduction. So you don't need to sacrifice a large speed to get a big savings. Small changes are a huge help for you here. Of course, it can't be that simple. It never is. This figure was just a generic graph, and it doesn't consider all the details of your engine or hull. Consult with an engineer to decide how much of a speed reduction can actually help you for your specific vessel. This is a service that DMS can provide you. Now you might find that the potential speed improvement is not quite you, what you expected, or you might find that the improvement is even better than the figure on your screen. Here's one possibility. If you operate a small vessel running at faster speeds, you're likely going to find out that you're pushing your ship past your hull speed. Now there's nothing wrong with going faster than hull speed, you're not breaking any rules here, but it does tend to mean that your fuel consumption goes up pretty quickly with speed. Even better though, the reverse happens. Your fuel consumption drops real quickly with speed. So reducing speed to just below your hull speed is going to do amazing things for your fuel consumption. 
I've got a link in the description below to show you how to calculate hull speed for your specific vessel. Number two, trim your vessel forward. Yeah, I said it right. Now hear me out. Starting today, you can potentially save one to 2% on your fuel consumption, and it requires no vessel modifications, no speed changes at all. You can keep doing everything you've done before and still save one to 2% on your fuel. This solution works especially well for ships with a long parallel mid-body and a low dead rise on their hull. If your ship has any aft trim, that parallel mid-body deflects the water downward. It creates additional resistance. Now, that's a very small change. It's a very small amount of trim. It barely changes the water pressure as it travels along your hull. But your parallel mid-body has a lot of surface area. Huge! And the basic rule that you can use for ships Anything times huge is still a number you have to care about. We do not want that parallel mid-body adding to resistance. Even better, a slight forward trim of about 0.1 degrees helps the ship best. Now granted, nobody's going to be able to read 0.1 degrees on a clinometer. You're going to need to convert that into a difference between your forward and your aft draft mark readings for your specific vessel. Your results might vary, so you should definitely test this to see how much forward trim benefits your vessel. And if you want to get a more exact trim value or a prediction of how much this is going to help you, DMS recommends a trim optimization study, which is a service that we can provide. But by all means, test it yourself for free. It doesn't cost anything to do it on your own. Number three, reduce phantom weight. You pay for every pound of weight that the ship drags through the water. So minimize that weight. Just like old houses, ships accumulate a lot of miscellaneous stuff. It adds up in all the little nooks and crannies all over the ship. And we fail to respect just how much weight that all adds up to become. I remember one vessel I inspected had all of these memorable items on board. Five spare pumps, enough to replace every major pump in their engine room. And I'm not talking about spare impellers or seals for the pumps. I'm talking the entire pump. And then we had three spare crane hooks of various different sizes. Not small ones, massive ones that you would have needed the crane to get the hook out of the stores. On top of that, we had at least 10 different chain falls of various sizes. Plus, we had three spare propeller blades. Now, yes, many of these things were absolutely necessary for the ship's operation. I'm not arguing against that. But the point is this, scattered across the ship, all of those little items might seem harmless, but all together, they added up to over 10% of the light ship weight. 10%! And those are just the items that were just being stored on board the ship, not actually used in daily operations. These are all weights that are not earning you money. And really, we're talking about things where you're just using your ship as floating storage. And you have to remember that it costs money to store weight on your ship. It costs you fuel. So take a good hard inventory of your ship and think about whether or not you would be better off storing some of those things on the dock. So to summarize up, reduce your speed. That can help you way more than you think. Trim the vessel forward. It might sound a little scary, but it can actually help you. And if you're worried about maneuverability, DMS can also help you with that as well. And last but not least, Reduce the phantom weight, take a good solid inventory of things that you're storing on your ship, and see what you can reduce. These are all things that you can do to reduce your fuel consumption, and they're all free. They don't require any capital investments. Put it all together, you can do some major advantages for your vessel and major fuel savings just by doing general housekeeping. And I would really like to close this out by tying it back into the real motivation for this, which is IMO 2020. Whatever you decide to do, IMO 2020 demands some form of action. Regulations push us forward. They require change. If we ignore them, they grow out of control into calamities. But if we take proactive action and decide on a path forward, even if that's minimal changes that require no capital investment, well then regulations are effectively managed and they become no major concern. And I hope that is going to become your experience with IMO 2020. Thank you very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect.
Can you do a video on swaths? Yes, I can. Can you do a video on towing tanks? Yes, I can. Yes, I do custom requests. You can hire me as a professional engineer to meet the needs of your project. Check out my website to see the host of engineering services I provide, along with a range of other helpful articles and other useful tips. And be sure to subscribe for more videos.